The Swift Programming Language Book 5.6 Edition, copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Deinitialization. A deinitializer is called immediately before a class instance is deallocated. You write deinitializers with the deinit keyword, similar to how initializers are written with the init keyword. Deinitializers are only available on class types. How deinitialization works. Swift automatically deallocates your instances when they are no longer needed to free up resources. Swift handles the memory management of instances through automatic reference counting, ARC, as described in automatic reference counting. Typically, you do not need to perform manual cleanup when your instances are deallocated. However, when you are working with your own resources, you might need to perform some additional cleanup yourself. For example, if you create a custom class to open a file and write some data to it, you might need to close the file before the class instance is deallocated. Class definitions can have at most one deinitializer per class. The deinitializer does not take any parameters and is written without parentheses. Deinitializers are called automatically just before instance deallocation takes place. You are not allowed to call a deinitializer yourself. Superclass deinitializers are inherited by their subclasses, and the superclass deinitializer is called automatically at the end of a subclass deinitializer implementation. Superclass deinitializers are always called, even if a subclass does not provide its own deinitializer. Because an instance is not deallocated until after its deinitializer is called, a deinitializer can access all properties of the instance it is called on and can modify its behavior based on those properties, such as looking up the name of a file that needs to be closed. Deinitializers in action. Here is an example of a deinitializer in action. This example defines two new types, bank and player, for a simple game. The bank class manages a made-up currency which can never have more than 10,000 coins in circulation. There can only ever be one bank in the game, and so the bank is implemented as a class with type properties and methods to store and manage its current state. Bank keeps track of the current number of coins it holds with its coins in bank property. It also offers two methods, distribute coins and receive coins to handle the distribution and collection of coins. The distribute coins method checks that there are enough coins in the bank before distributing them. If there are not enough coins, bank returns a smaller number than the number that was requested and returns zero if no coins are left in the bank. It returns an integer value to indicate the actual number of coins that were provided. The receive coins method simply adds the received number of coins back into the bank's coin store. The player class describes a player in the game. Each player has a certain number of coins stored in their purse at any time. This is represented by the player's coins in purse property. Each player instance is initialized with a starting allowance of a specified number of coins from the banks during initialization, although a player instance may receive fewer than that number if not enough coins are available. The player class defines a win coins method, which retrieves a certain number of coins from the bank and adds them to the player's purse. The player class also implements a deinitializer, which is called just before a player instance is deallocated. Here, the deinitializer simply returns all of the player coins to the bank. A new player instance is created with the request for 100 coins if they are available. This player instance is stored in an optional player variable called player1. An optional variable is used here because players can leave the game at any point. The optional lets you track whether there is currently a player in the game. Because player1 is an optional, it is qualified with an exclamation point when its coin in purse property is accessed to print its default number of coins and whenever its win coins method is called. Here, the player has won 2,000 coins. The player's purse now contains 2,100 coins and the bank only has 7,900 coins left. The player has now left the game. This is indicated by setting the optional player1 variable to nil, meaning no player instance. At the point that this happens, the player1 variable's reference to the player instance is broken. No other properties or variables are still referring to the player instance, and so it is deallocated in order to free up its memory. Just before this happens, the deinitializer is called automatically and its coins are returned to the bank.